Hey guys, I'm back. Um, this time, I think what I'm going to do is step through the backpropagation algorithm for a very, very simple case. And uh, we'll sort of plot out a, just a simple, you can see here in a diagram, I have a simple single neuron with a single weight, no bias, no nothing. Uh, and we'll step through it and see how the algorithm functions and how it converges to a data point. All right. So this is sort of uh, the standard example. This is straightforward. We have our, whoops, let me see if I can make this bigger. We have our uh, transfer function sigma, which is just the regular one over one plus e to the negative x. Uh, recall that the derivative of that is just sigma times one minus sigma. Um, also recall the error function that we have. It's given by, right, this error is one half the sum across all the data points of the difference between the output and the target value quantity squared. Um, and if you want to look more into this derivation, you can look at my other video. But, so as a simple example, let's just take a single neuron with only one incoming weight and no bias. So here's this picture, right? I have some input value x. Um, I have a weight w that connects that input to the, no the node, <laughs> the neuron we're looking at, which has a transfer function sigma. Um, when you evaluate that, you get output script l, okay? The equation which defines this is very, very simple. Script O equals sigma of Wx, right? The weight times the input. So now using this error function up here, um, I'm gonna compute the derivative of error with respect to the weight. Um, so essentially I'm just doing derivative of, now also there's only one, one data point in this example. So the sum goes away. This is one half output minus target value squared uh, when you take that derivative, you get output minus target times output times one minus output times the input value, right? And this is fully worked out in the other video, so that's less important. Um, I mostly want to just have this. This is the <coughs> sort of all spelled out version in terms of our target value t, uh, our weight w, and whatever the input value is x, all right? And it is this expression right here. So now what I'm going to do is pull up a win plot, um, and we're just going to, in fact, I'm going to build it with you step by step. Close that so that you can follow along if you want. Uh, win plot is a really awesome little plotting program uh, that is totally free, and I highly recommend you go grab it. Well, you're, you're going to have to have it if you're going to follow along. Otherwise, uh, enjoy the ride. Uh, let me pause this and, and sort of reorient the screen. All right, so I've pulled up just a single... Um, a single window here. Uh, this is a 2D plotting window. So the first thing I'm going to do is define a uh, user function. I'll just call it SGM and it's going to be the sigmoid 1 over 1 plus exp of negative x. Enter. Now this is just for convenience. Um, I just want to refer to this function. So for example, I could just go explicit plot sigmoid of x and there it is. This is my little inventory over here. And so there it is, right? This is the standard input. Uh, sorry, the standard transfer function. So let me delete that. One of the cool things we can do in here is we can create some parameters. So let's create parameters A and B. A, individual parameter B, B. Um, and this, this is actually going to be the xy pair that I'm going to train this neuron to find, okay? So let's, uh, let's go into equation and plot a point, and it's going to be point AB. It's going to be solid, size 2. Blue is fine, okay? All right, so I can grab these scroll bars and move this dot around, right? So let's make it like 2, uh, I don't know. 0 0.65. Okay, just made that up. Um, now, let me let me set some bounds on this here. So let me change the view. Uh, this is going to go, let's say, negative 5 to 5 is fine. Negative 0.1 to 1.1. That'll be good. Okay, All right, so here's my data point. I can drag this, this guy around. So 2.65, that sounds good. Now, um, let's create... Uh, let's grab another individual one called W, and this will be the weight, the one weight that we have. 
So let's just set it to, I don't know, one for now. And let's add an explicit one, which is the sigmoid of w times x. All right. Now this is the sigmoid function. I can change how steep it is by changing this weight w. All right. And you can see it changing here. Uh, let's uh, let's go like two. Set that as the right bound. Negative two. Set that as the left bound. All right. You can. Wow, that's going really fast. You can do all sorts of nice stuff where it'll automatically animate it for you. Uh, but that's besides the point, right? Anyway, okay. So let's just set it to one for now. So this is the regular sigmoid. Okay, now, so what I want to do is recall this beast here, this expression. So what I want to do is take this sigma of wx minus t times sigma of wx, 1 minus sigma of wx times x. This is the derivative of the error with respect to the weight. Now if you recall from the back propagation algorithm, I'm going to move opposite this direction. So I want to display this somehow. Okay, so I'm going to keep that on tap. Actually, you won't be able to see it, but I'm going to put it off to the side. Just so I have the equation sitting here. Okay, now, uh, what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and create a segment, xy, and it's going to go from, uh, let's say, negative 2, I'm sorry, negative 3, 1 half, to negative 3, 1 half, uh, minus, and this minus sign here is going to be because I want to move opposite to this direction. And then I'm just going to plug in this formula uh, where w is our weight w. t is this target value uh, that I want to go through, 0.65, etc. Okay, so I'm just going to plug that in right now. So this is sigma of w times x minus the target value, which is b. Oh, I'm sorry. For, for x, I'm actually going to put in a, right? a is the input value uh, that corresponds to the output value of 0.65, and I want to evaluate the derivative at that point. So for x, I'm plugging in a, and for t, which is the target output, I'm plugging in b. Um, so that, that's what's going on there. So times sigma of w times x times 1 minus sigma of w times x times x. And let's make this an arrow that points to p2. Color black is fine. OK. Oh, I'm sorry. I think I did that sideways. 0.5. Oh, that's what I did. <laughs> Negative 3. OK. Uh, let's see what happens here. Um, oh, see I screwed it up. x is a w times a times a. Let's try that. Okay, so now we have a little arrow. And you can see uh, as I change the desired data point, it moves up and down. And essentially, what whichever direction this thing points is the direction that I'm going to have to change the weight in. Okay, so let me bound this between 0 and 1 to the right. And what do we have? I don't know, 0.65, I think that's what it was. And 2. Okay. So, let me go ahead and make a little uh, text box over here. This is the delta in W. Right? So, whatever, whatever this arrow says to do, I'm going to take my current value of w and move it down or up depending on what it says. Okay. So this is my data point in summary, right? The point 2 comma 0 0.65. I want this curve to go through that line. Uh, what I plugged in over here is just 
all I did really is I built an arrow that points in the direction that I want to change w and that's literally just the derivative right that's from our our calculus we did earlier so well what does it say to do right now it says it needs to decrease currently it's one and you can see it's too high so let's start making it smaller okay now it's 0.96 it still says negative so let's keep making it smaller I'm down to 0 0.8 0 0.75 0 0.68 and you can see I mean the curve is changing everywhere but this distance right here between the data point that we want and the data point that the node is outputting is decreasing and all I'm doing is is whatever this tells me so I'm going to keep decreasing it now notice that the arrow still says it's decreasing but it's shorter because the derivative is well it's it's shallower if you were to plot it um, it's not quite as steep because I'm getting closer to the actual solution so I'm just gonna keep doing that until the arrow um, goes away right that looks pretty good I don't really see the arrow here I'm basically there although the V still says it's pointing down so if I go down again oh I went too far go back up let's see I don't know 0 0.3 0 0.35 that's too much 3 2 that's too much 3 1 still too much 305 oh, okay 305 306 oh, I mean this is really pointless I'm pretty darn close um, anyway so you can see the derivative is very very small I've sort of adjusted w to come close to this point and uh, the derivative here is basically zero it's I, I mean the, the line doesn't even plot and you can see tada, I found it across the line so that was a very very long worked out example so now let's pick another point let's say I want it to go through um, actually let's leave it up here let's make it one and then 0.2 something like that okay so it's saying the weight has to go down quite a bit so let's keep moving the weight down 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 and you can see I'm already into the negative range the weight is negative 0.2 let's keep making it negative 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 now keep in mind I'm just watching what this delta is telling me negative 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 so I can keep going until the arrow flips right there and ta -da, there it is it goes through the point the derivative has gone to zero and that's it all right so that's that's it it's this is kind of a fun thing you can kind of pick let's say I wanted to go through I don't know three and 0 0.25 then I need to move this up and so I'll keep moving it up and see now this is interesting you can see how the derivative grows even though I was farther away over here and it really it's because the sigmoid gets so flat then you you kind of hit these plateaus out here where the derivative isn't very large and so it can be slow going in the beginning and then you can see as I get somewhere in this range the derivative actually gets larger in the same direction and I start to converge quickly and then as I get closer and closer it slows down oh, and I pass it I don't know negative 0.38 that's not that's too much anyway so there you go it goes through the point um, in the next one the next video I'm gonna throw in a bias term in here right it's gonna work out exactly the same way except this will be one uh, this is probably kind of small so I'll throw a bias in here and we'll work out the next line um, and we'll add it in as another parameter box right here and we will pick a point and adjust both of them and we'll see how that goes. Okay, so I will see you guys in a second.